This is Annie of ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. Thank you so much for joining us today for Live with Annie. As usual, we've started the stream a bit early. This helps us get everything set up and broadcasting properly to our various platforms. You can find a countdown clock on the screen showing how long it will be until we actually go live. While you wait, please connect with us and other viewers in the chat. Let us know where you are from and whether you're a new or longtime viewer. We'll see you live soon. again for joining us for Live with Annie. We are so happy to have you with us today. While you wait for the program to start, we hope you'll enjoy the content playing on screen. There's so much inspiration, so take a moment to tell us what you love in the chat. Don't forget there is a countdown clock on the screen so you know how long until we go live.
It's Annie again reminding you that we'll be going live with this week's episode shortly. There is a countdown clock on the screen showing how much time is left. You've got just enough time to grab some water or a beverage of your choice and a snack and to connect with us in the chat. We'd love to hear what you've been working on this week. back to remind you that we'll be starting this week's live very shortly. We've got a really fun episode planned for today, and we'll see you soon. Hi, I'm Annie of ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. Thank you so much for joining us for episode number 37 of season two of Live with Annie. It is always a treat to see our regular viewers joining us from all over the world. So thank you for being with us again. If you're new to Live with Annie, we welcome you to our community and hope to see you again as well. We know there are lots of things all of you could be doing with this time, and it really means a lot to us that you've made time to be with us today. If you enjoy these episodes, we hope that you'll give us some hearts or thumbs up, and also that you'll take a minute to follow us wherever you are watching us from. And if you know someone else who you think might enjoy the information that we share, we'd especially love it if you'd tell them about Live with Annie too. The easiest way to do that is to just tag them while you're watching, because that will take them directly to the episode and they can watch it too. 
if tagging is new to you. To do that, you just type the at symbol followed by the name they use on the platform where you're watching. Their name and picture will pop up so you can make sure you've got the right person. If you do, click on it, type a comment if you like, and submit it. Also, we really love reading your comments, so please be sure to interact with us throughout this presentation. Since we can't be together in person, having an online conversation is the next best option. And finally, if you have any questions as we go, please be sure to add them in the comments or the chat, and I will do my best to answer them before we close. Last week, we had a delightful visit with Laura Petrovich Cheney, who showed us the amazing quilts that she makes using salvaged wood. I really loved learning more about her process and seeing her enthusiasm and enjoyment. It was so interesting to see how the art of quilting translates so well to other mediums, and I could totally relate to Laura's pleasure at seeing all the colors and textures in the various woods and her inability to throw away even the smallest scraps. I'm sure every quilter can relate to that. If you missed that episode or want to watch it again, remember that you can find all the previous 89 episodes of Live with Annie at our website. Just go to byannie.com live or you'll also find them on our YouTube channel and our Facebook page. And we'll put up all the links to make them easy for you to find. Quick drink before we start on today's topic. So it's back to school time all around the world, and we are hoping for a wonderful, happy, and healthy year for students and teachers everywhere. Both of my grandsons are in school this year, one in pre-K and one in second grade, and I tell you, they are such happy little campers. It is so gratifying to see both of them loving school and so excited about school and learning. We took a trip to Las Vegas over the weekend, both to catch an Imagine Dragons concerts and to shop at Ikea. When we asked Liam, who's my seven-year-old grandson, to name his favorite part of the weekend, I fully expected him to say the concert, as he is a huge Imagine Dragons fan, and it was his first concert. He knows the words to lots and lots of their songs and plays them every time he comes to my house. But his response was, getting my desk. He was so excited to have a desk with drawers and chairs on wheels for his room. I love that. He's, he's a good little student and he's going to stay that way, so that's exciting. Anyway, today we thought we'd share some ideas for projects to make for students of all ages. From small projects such as pencil bags and notebook covers to larger projects such as backpacks and computer carriers. Just keep in mind that all of these projects are great for other uses, too, and they're perfect projects for moms or dads who finally got some time for sewing now that the kids are back in school. We're going to start with a quick and easy project called a pencil case for Lola. So this is a fun, easy to make little bag. It's great for pens, crayons, markers, sewing tools and supplies. I've got some first aid items in here, all kinds of ways you can use them. The case has a zippered top. It has a border on the front to give it a little extra interest and a handle to make carrying easy. And this is a free pattern that's available at our website, byannie.com, and it's a really great way to learn some basic Biani techniques, such as quilting with soft and stable and installing a zipper. So as you can see, just by varying the fabrics, um, you can make one perfect for a girl or a boy of any age. So that is a pencil case for Lola. If you would like a larger version of that bag, you will want to check out our quick zip cases pattern. So this pattern includes instructions for cases in two sizes. So a small one and a large one, both of which are bigger than the pencil case for Lola. Again, they're perfect for writing instruments. They're also good for sewing tools and supplies. Um, the small one holds a bottle of water really well. If you had a carabiner and wanted to hook it onto your belt, you'd have an easy way to carry a bottle of water, snacks, all kinds of ways you can use it. 
I have to tell you, quick sip cases are one of my go-to patterns for gift giving. They are really great for using leftover scraps of quilted fabric and zipper tape or small pieces of fabric and soft and stable, and they're really quick and easy to make. And who can't use an extra bag or two to hold supplies? We did film a set of tutorials to walk you through the steps to make these easy cases, and to find them, you'll just go to the Tutorials tab at Biani.com and then scroll down to the Techniques section. You'll see a heading that says, Make a Quick Zip Case. And when you click on that, all the videos will pop up so you can see the, the videos and descriptions for those. So that's a fun little um, set of bags to make. Another really simple project that's great for students is our Write Stuff Notebook covers. So this pattern includes instructions for covers in three sizes. The small and the medium were designed primarily as covers for planners, but the large one is designed for a one and a half inch three ring binder. So this would be a really great one for students. Each of them features a handy outer zippered pocket and also a slip pocket on the inside and the back. There's a flap closure that closes with a hidden magnetic snap and an attached bookmark that helps you find your place quickly. So you can put that um, in any part of your notebook that you want to mark. Also included in the pattern is a cute little see-through double-sided accessory pouch that holds pens, pencils, highlighters, markers, washi tape, post-its, whatever you want to put in here. So this pouch is made by attaching zippered mesh pockets on each side of a piece of vinyl. So you've got three separate pockets. It makes it really easy to see everything that's inside, but also keeps everything separate and easy to access. The mesh stretches a little bit, so it's going to accommodate multiple markers, and you can make divisions if you want extra divisions, or you want to rearrange where they are so you can keep everything separate. And the pouch is designed so it will either fit in that slip pocket that's in the back, or you can put it in the inner sleeve, or you can put it in the pocket that's on the outside. So lots of ways to use that. This is a fun little project, great way to use up some leftover pieces of mesh, zipper tape, and vinyl, and great little gifts for lots of occasions. So that also fits in that outside pocket. One thing that I want to mention before I move on beyond this is that the pattern is, was written when the only binders I knew of had the rings right in the middle of the binder. Some of the binders that you get today have the rings offset so that they're more like of a D-ring shape. If your binder is like that, make sure you take that into consideration when you make your sleeves that go on each side. You're going to keep one the same, but the one that's on the back, like if your rings are right here, you're going to want it a little bit narrower, and that's going to change the pocket if it's on the back as well. So there's no reason you couldn't put that pocket on the front. Um, it's just how we designed it. So. Let's see, we're going to move on now to zip it up. So here is another little project that is perfect for students who are returning to school. And these are especially good for high school and college students. So this is called Zip It Up, and it includes instructions for zippered organizers in two sizes. So each of them features a little handle, simple handle for carrying it, an outer zippered pocket made of quilted fabric, and on this one, the small case was designed to hold an iPad mini. The larger one, the outside pocket, was designed to hold an iPad Pro. And they zip up so that everything inside stays nice and safe and secure, but then it opens for the case to, to open flat. And so inside, each one of them has some zippered pockets, one made of mesh, one made of vinyl, and they're just great little places for storing all kinds of things. Both those mesh and vinyl pockets give you really good visibility, and the mesh gives you a little bit of stretch for bulkier items. The vinyl pocket gives you a little bit better security, extra security for smaller items. So again, that is Zip It Up and lots of ways that you can can use those fun cases. All right, the next project I want to show you is called Grab Some Grub. 
and this is perfect for anyone who carries a lunch to school or to work or someone even who enjoys picnics. So this um, roomy bag has room for all the makings for um, a hearty lunch. So you've got room for your sandwich, your drink. In the back is a mesh pocket that's a perfect place to put a little ice pack, um, your silverware, some napkins, things like that. On the outside you've got the option of putting a chalkboard um, marker on here so you can leave someone a message or you can use a fabric border and then on the back we have a little vinyl sleeve which is a perfect spot for um, putting someone's name so you can identify it. Uh, this one we've got a thermos in here so plenty of room for everything you need. There's a padded handle at the top and there are two styles of closure. So on this one, we did a side release buckle to close it. And on that one, we did a D-ring and a swivel hook. And, and the size of the straps that are attached to those vary depending on what you're doing because of the length, but the pattern includes instructions for each. So you'll need to know what kind of hardware you're going to do before you cut out your pieces for the bag. The pattern also includes instructions for making it with quilted fabric, which is what we did on these, or to make it um, without quilting. And on this one, we did skipped the quilting and we lined the inside with slicker iron-on laminate so that you can easily wipe it clean. And so if you do want to use slicker on the inside, we recommend that you make the non-quilted version. And again, the pattern includes instructions for both of those. Just know that soft and stable, which is what we use inside it, whether you quilt or not, um, is going to give it great stability. It's also going to provide some insulation and it's going to make sure that it lasts a really long time. So that is Grab Some Grub, just a fun little lunch bag for anybody who needs to carry their lunch to work or school. And I didn't exactly show that, but once you're done with lunch, if you don't have dishes and things, you can see how nice and flat it packs. So just fold it um, down and put it on the shelf and it's ready to go next time you need to pack a lunch. All right, students have so much to carry to school and home, and backpacks are really essential for making that carrying easy. So next, I wanna talk about some Biani backpack patterns. So the first one we're going to talk about is Out and About. And this is a compact but very feature-rich backpack, and we sized it to work for adults as well as children. So the pattern has um, two sizes, but the thing to know about this is that the bag size is the very same for each one of them. The only thing that changes is the length of the shoulder straps. So this particular backpack is made using the shorter, the small straps is what we call them, or children's, I'm not sure exactly what we called them. And on here, I think we called this the adult version. Since I am short, I actually prefer the small straps because when I put this on, the padded straps go over my shoulders, but not so far down that they really chafe under my arms. So um, the pattern gives you instructions, the add-on video and the intro video all go into detail about how to size the straps. So make sure you check those out if you're planning to make this bag. In addition to these padded adjustable straps that, the, that each of the packs has. They also have a padded handle at the top that makes it easy to carry, and they have two compartments. So there's a big compartment in the back, a main compartment, and then a smaller front compartment. And when you attach this smaller front compartment, you can do it by sewing all the way around, or you can leave an opening at the top, which creates a special hidden pocket. I really love this feature of it. It's a great place to put your glasses, your keys, and in here I've got a phone. So it's a perfect place to stash something that you want to get to really quickly. <coughs> Excuse me, I gotta have a big drink. So on the front compartment, there is a zippered pocket. This again also gives you really easy access 
and secure storage for small items like keys, lipsticks, a small wallet, things that you want to get to quickly and easily. Then there are zippers that go around both of the, the main compartment and the front compartment so that you can easily get into each of those sections. So I'm going to close this pocket and we'll open this one. So inside the front compartment, we have a full height zippered mesh pocket. We also have a fabric slip pocket that is divided into three sections. So this is a perfect place to carry pens and pencils, a notebook, other items that you want to get to really quickly. Then inside the main compartment, there is another full height zippered mesh pocket and a full height fabric pocket with a divided mesh pocket on top of it. So lots and lots of pockets and places to store things in this bag. Again, we really love using mesh for pockets as it doesn't add any bulk, but it gives us visibility of the contents and a little bit of stretch. For this pocket, we preferred to use fabric because that gives us some privacy for personal items. So that is out and about. And again, you can make it with shorter straps or longer straps depending who you're making this for. I made um, one of these for each of my grandsons when they were quite a bit smaller and um, they really love those backpacks. All right, let's take a look now at another small backpack, um, but this may be a little bit bigger. Not quite as many features as that one in terms of pockets, but it's still got a lot going on too. This is a really travel friendly um, backpack and let me talk about some of the features of it. So on the front, we have a large pocket that has a magnetic flap closure. This again is a really great place to stash a phone or items that you need to get to quickly. And inside that pocket, you might see it easier on this fabric. I don't know. Inside that pocket, can you see that? There's some credit card size pockets that are great for stashing a room key, your loyalty cards, business cards, things like that. Then on the back is a padded grab handle, some adjustable straps, and a zippered pocket that's made of quilted fabric. Inside the bag are even more pockets. So we've got a full height slip, um, zippered pocket and a slip pocket. And as you can see on this one, we made both of those fat pockets out of fabric. On this bag, I made the slip pocket out of fabric but I made um, the zippered pocket out of mesh. So the pattern includes instructions for either one. Uh, you can do the one that you prefer. So that is back at you. And I'm gonna leave one of those up here so that you can see how its size compares. A Little bit taller, a little bit wider than out and about. But here's its big sister. So this is got your back. And this bag is better, I think, for students or um, people who may want to carry a laptop or something like that. It's sized to be big enough to hold a binder and some books. It's very, very similar to Back At Ya. It has a front pocket with a magnetic flap closure. It's got the inner credit card sized pockets. It's got the zippered pocket on back the padded handle, the adjustable straps. Because it's a little bit wider, we had room for a slip pocket on the side, so you could stick a bottle of water in here. Do I have that bottle of water handy? So you've got room for a bottle of water, your phone, pens and pencils, things that you want to get to really quickly. And then just like back at you on the inside, we have a full height mesh pocket on one side, which you could make with fabric if you choose, and a slip pocket on the other side. So that gives you a good idea of the different sizes, um, out and about being smallest, back at you, and then got your back. And on both of these, these are the number two, Roman number two versions. So back at you two and got your back mm -hmm. two. No, 2.1. 2.1, excuse me. Sorry about that. I've done more updates on that than I remember. Yes, because we, and this, all three of these patterns have add-on videos that go with them. So if you're someone who likes a little extra help, um, those are great ones to use. 
All right, more and more schools are requiring computers for students, even the little ones. So next, I want to look at some Biana Annie patterns that are designed for carrying computers. And the first one is a simple, easy project to make. I've got a couple different versions of it here. This is our eye cases pattern. So these are little clutch style cases designed to carry just like a clutch or to put inside another bag. And we designed these specifically to carry and protect small electronics. So each one has a fold over flap that closes with hook and loop tape a zippered pocket on the back that gives you convenient and safe storage for your chargers and cords or other personal items. And we use Biani Soft and Stable in them to give them great body and stability. That also provides some cushioning and some padded protection for your electronic gear. So the small case is the perfect size to hold an iPad mini, a Kindle, or another e-reader. And the large case is designed for a regular sized iPad or a similar, similarly sized tablet. One thing to note is that the cases are designed to hold a naked device or one that has just a simple hard case. So if you've got a case that's very bulky, you may need to change the sizes a little bit. Um, so be sure to check the dimensions of the bag that you're making or of the device that you want to store against the sizes that are shown in the pattern and adjust them as needed. And one thing to know is that if you are going to change that, you may need to consider the depth of the item in addition to its height and width. So um, if it's very thick, you're going to make need to make it a little bit wider, a little bit taller to accommodate that. And also know that if it's taller here, it's going to affect where it folds and where you put your pockets. So um, I always recommend that you make one according to the pattern so you understand how things go and then think about what you wanna do to customize it or make changes the next time. As you can see, each of these has a border on the front. The purpose of that border is to hide the stitching when we attach the Velcro, but it also gives it an interesting look. Um, it's a great place to put a little brand label like we did on these cases. On this case, we completely skipped the border and we cut the fabric or the, for the case from a fabric that had a border printed on it. So in this case, we sewed our hook and loop tape to the lining and the soft and stable first, and then we put the main fabric on the outside so we wouldn't have those stitching lines going through. So, but still easy to do and makes a really great little case. So that is eye cases, and those come in two sizes. All right, next I want to show you laptop computer cases. So this is Laptop Computer Carriers Roman numeral two, and this pattern includes instructions for carriers for a standard size laptop. And there are two different styles in the pattern. So the very simplest one is the laptop case. I've got everything turned around today. So this has a zippered closure at the top and a full width zippered pocket with a border on the front. It has padded handles that make it easy to carry, but it's still compact enough to fit into a backpack or other bag. In fact, it's sized so that it fits easily inside here. There's a really easy to install zipper at the top that opens all the way across the top and down the sides, so it's going to be easy to get things in and out. Inside is a full height zippered mesh pocket, and that separates things and it also protects papers, cords, and things like that. So simple bag to make. If you have made any of our free patterns, this is basically easy does it with some changes to dimensions and different style of handles. But if you've made easy does it, um, you are going to be comfortable making any of these bags. So that one is the laptop case. This is the laptop carrier, which has more bells and whistles, but still really easy to make. So just like the other, it has a zippered closure at the stop top. This one has two styles of handles. So we did um, reinforced strapping handles. Um, for this, we did a, a detachable adjustable padded strap for, so you can carry it over your shoulder. And then on the back, we put a strap so you can hook it on um, rolling luggage. 
inside there's four pockets on the outside so there's this combination slip pocket and zippered pocket here and then um, two slip pockets on each side of the bag inside is a fabric pocket let's see if i can fold this down that's divided into three sections and a full height zippered pocket that's made out of quilted fabric so oftentimes what I will do is put my computer in this pocket, my cords and things in those pockets, and then I've got the whole inside open for a wallet, you know, all my other accessories that I need to carry. And again, the strap on the back is perfect if you want to carry it on rolling luggage. So that is our laptop computer carriers pattern. If you've got somebody who has a widescreen laptop, and they want to make a larger case, this is our executive carryalls Roman numeral two pattern. So it is made exactly the same way. It has exactly the same features as the laptop bags. It's just bigger. So the case is simple and easy, has the padded handles, the full height mesh pocket on one side. This has the combination slip zip pocket, the side pockets. This one adds a pocket on the back and then it's got a full height zippered pocket as well as the slip pockets. Other, basically the very same, just sized differently. If you've got smaller um, devices or like an iPad or a notebook, then we recommend our netbook computer carriers to pattern. So very similar to those, just because they're so much smaller, we had to change how the strap is attached because there really wasn't room to put pockets on the side. So the handle on this attaches to the front and back. Other than that, very, very similar. So it's got the mesh pocket on the inside. And this one, I believe, has the same. So. To check out the specific size for any of these, go to the Patterns product page on our website. You will also find a comparison chart there that shows all of them next to each other with all the dimensions. So you can look at those and compare them um, to the device that you have that you want to carry. So I hope you enjoyed this little mini trunk show of Biani patterns that are perfect for students returning to school or many other uses. I know people who make these to carry um, paperwork back and forth to the office or the executive carryall. I've seen more than one person make those to take to sewing classes and quilt retreats. Leslie made one that she uses to carry her light box in. So lots of ways to use them. All of them are lots of fun to make any of them would make a really great gift for someone special. As always, we ask that you ask for the patterns and supplies at your local quilt shop. If you don't have a local quilt shop or can't find them, you can always find them from us at byani.com. And if you are going to shop at your local quilt shop and want to check your supplies at home before you go shopping, remember that you can click on the supply list tab that's on the patterns products page and that will give you a list of fabrics and other supplies that you'll need so that you can go and, and you know, know what you've got at home and what you need to add to your supplies. All right, let's go on now and see if we've got any questions. So the first one is, is the slicker when applied machine washable and dryable? No, which I didn't really realize when I started using it. So Joan Holly, who um, is the owner of Lazy, or was the owner, Joan, we lost Joan a few months ago, but um, she designed it mostly to be something that you can wipe clean. And when she, when I talked to her about it, she said, wash it by methods that don't involve immersion in water. Well, I used it in bags and I know that I knew that I was going to wash, want to wash them. So I have washed bags um, that have slicker in them. I can tell you that over time, first of all, the first time what I found is that it separated, which didn't bother me because it was sewn in. But I have found that over time, as it separates, it starts to not wear as well. So my recommendation, if you want something that's going to last a long time and be continue to be easy to wipe clean, but also be washable, is to probably use a different product, something like Odie Coat or something along those lines. Can you semi-demo how the padded shoulder straps are made on out and about? Okay, I think I can. 
So on out and about, there are two layers to this, or three. It's been a while since I've made this. But I know that we cut the back of the strap out of quilted fabric, and it is longer than the top of the strap. So we cut that out of quilted fabric, and then we make a regular strap, which we sew on top of it, and then we sew another piece of quilted fabric, which is bound on the bottom, on top of that, and then we bind the edges. So we round the bottom corners, and we start binding up here, and go all the way around, and then that is attached to our bag. So really simple and easy to do. Basically a regular strap with some padding made with quilted fabric on top and below. Would it be possible to make out and about out of faux leather or cork? Would you use soft and stable as well? We have not made this particular bag out of um, either one of those, but we have made um, bow me over out of um, cork on por a portion of it. We've made switchback out of cork. I can tell you that when you get to these little areas in here, you're sewing in really tight areas. So if I did faux leather or cork, I'm not sure that I would add soft and stable as well. What do you think, Glow? Yeah, but without quilting. We did it without quilting. We did it without quilting. Yeah. So, um, you may want to use a fabric for a portion of it. I know when we did, why don't you go grab that switchback that's made out of cork and, and grab the out and about made out of Pendleton wool. So it, the Pendleton wool one I think is in the first box and the switchback is like the fourth bag back in there. Well, I was gonna go grab those two bags and, and I'll give you some tips on that. Do we have any other questions below that, I wonder? I don't think so. While she does that, I'm going to have another drink. I hope you all are hydrating with me today. So we, um, when we were at the H&H &H show in um, Chicago this summer, there was a vendor there who had some really beautiful cork that was really thin. And they are going to, or they sent us some home to work with. And they had quite a few um, bags that they had made using cork. and soft and stable um, inside them and they were they were awesome so um, we are hoping to get a little more time to to play with those and practice with those but I wanted to show you first a bag that we made an out and about where we skipped the soft and stable one where we added the soft and stable so you can kind of see the difference so we made one of these using a um, a heavy blanket weight wool and for this, we felt that adding soft and stable, this wool was really heavy, would be more than we want it to do. So on this one, we skipped the soft and stable and we did just a fabric lining. So here you can see this is the back of the bag and then we put the pocket on top of it. So it doesn't have kind of the same structure that a bag made with soft and stable does, uh, but it hands, holds up really well and worked really good. So if, what do you think? Would you make it with cork with soft and stable or would you skip it on this bag? I think. Maybe put it in the main not, part of the bag uh, not, and not uh, in the front no, compartment. Not everything. I think I'd use some, some fabric when I do Let me see this This, this part, I do like maybe fabric because it's gonna be more difficult, difficult. to So there's, this is another one that we made using a lighter weight wool. And on this one, we did use soft and stable through all the layers. And so we, see if you can, you can't really tell because it's hidden, but there's soft and stable and a lining. And, you know, this is just a layer of fabric here. But we did add soft and stable on this one because we wanted that structure and body that that would provide. And this, um, there's even some in these layers here as well. But on this switchback that we made using cork all the way around, this does have soft and stable in it all the way around. But when we attached this pocket right here and we needed to have fabric to sew, 
we knew that cork would be too thick to, to do w the way this pattern is designed. So here we just did fabric. So that might be an option is to do just fabric, at least in this portion, and not have the cork all the way, all the way around. So again, what I usually say is make one according to the pattern using the materials that it suggests. That will give you a better idea for how everything goes together and um, whether or not you could use other um, components like that. The last question that Leslie put up is, could you make out and about larger to fit a laptop? You certainly could. Basically, any of our patterns can be adjusted. Again, I recommend you make one the way the pattern is designed so you know how it fits and then you'll know what needs to be adjusted. But if you want it to make this wider and taller, what you would need to consider, take into consideration as you do that, is um, all the pieces that are affected by those changes. So this particular one has a front and a back that are, I believe, the same size. So if you're going to make it wider and taller, any piece that comes in contact with those has to be adjusted as well. So your zipper side strip needs to be adjusted. I'd probably, if I made this wider, I'd increase this base strip by the same amount. Your strip that goes around here needs to be adjusted here, here, and here if you change that. So, so you're going to take however much you add to the height twice plus however much you add to the width and add that to that strip as well. The pattern tells you how to shape this. You could probably get away with shaping it pretty much the same. And so if you're adding, let's say, two inches to the height and an inch, inch to the width, you're going to want to increase this strip by five inches. You could, if you shape it the same way, you don't have to worry about making other adjustments. If you're going to change the way it's shaped, let's say you want one that's not rounded at the top, you want it to be square, uh, you're on your own to figure that out because you can't just add, um, you can't just follow the pattern and make those minor changes. You're gonna have other changes that you have to consider as well. Um, you'll want to consider how your handles fit, all of your markings that you do for attaching pieces are going to change. Um, your pockets, whatever you change the front and back for those full height pockets, they're going to have to change by the same amounts. And your slip pockets, you're going to have to just decide you know, where you want those to fit. But certainly possible, um, just make one the way it's designed first so you understand it and then go from there. All right. When a pattern calls for fusible interfacing, what weight should be used? So the interfacing that we use and that we sell here is made by um, Pellon and it's called Shape Flex 101. It's readily available at quilt shops and other stores. Um, so if you aren't ordering from us, it's one. It's a, I wouldn't call it a lightweight, but it's definitely not a heavyweight. I guess it's more in the midweight. It looks like white, um, cotton fabric with glue on it. And so I love the weight that it is. It gives, it turns your fabric kind of into a home deck fabric. But mid-weight um, Shape Flex 101 if you can find that. All right, it looks like that's all the questions for today. Thank you so much for um, asking those. And if you've got any others, be sure and leave them in the comments or email us at info at and we'll do our best to get those answered. I know that I have not answered questions in a couple days, so that's got to be something I do before I, I close uh, my business tonight. So um, they always, anything that has to do with patterns usually get referred to me, and I have been busy with other stuff the past couple days and not gotten in there to check. So thank you for your patience. All right, let's move on now to some special announcements. We are about halfway through National Sewing Month, and our friends at Shannon Fabrics are celebrating with a big giveaway for all the makers who give so much to this industry. And they've partnered with 21 other amazing brands, including us at Biani, for their biggest giveaway ever. You can enter to win one of three amazing prize packs of sewing, quilting, embroidery, and crafting kits, notions, and tools. The contest is open to makers in the continental U.S. only, and you can enter to win until the very last day of September. And three winners will be randomly selected on October 3rd. 
So we will put up the link so that you can get all the information and get your entries in. Also, our friend Scott um, Fortunoff at Jaftex works really tirelessly to promote local quilt shops, and he is back with his hashtag ScottSentMe2022 challenge. Basically, Scott's goal is to get you to visit quilt shops in the U.S. and Canada, and you have the months of September, October, and November to do that. Um, those who visit the most shops can win prizes, and there are 10 prizes this year, totaling almost $4,000. You will find all the details on Scott's blog, and we will put up the link so that you can learn all about it. I need one more drink before we move on. We have our first really nice cool day today. We had rain all day yesterday, and it was like 60 degrees this morning, so a beautiful day, but I'm still really thirsty. All right, so we're going to move on now to our featured local quilt shops of the week. At Biani, as you know if you've watched us very often, we are all about supporting local quilt shops. And each week we like to highlight a store or more during Live with Annie. So this week we are visiting two stores, each of whom has a Biani trunk show on display. And we are going to start in Webster, New York at the Village Quilt Shop. This fun store is for quilters of all ages and skill levels and offers fabric from many designers and vendors, all types of patterns, notions, wool, embroidery, and classes. The shop is owned by partners Monique and Vanetta, who were proud to recently celebrate the shop's three-year anniversary. Monique says, we have been friends since we were five and we're more family than friends. It was our dream to have a quilt shop for a long time, but the last three years have not been easy. Three months after we opened, the apartment above us had a leak and flooded our store. We had to close for over a month for repairs. Then, two months later, COVID hit and we were closed for three more months. We tell our customers that we have survived a flood and a pandemic, so we are golden. That's a great attitude. The Village Quilt Shop will have their Biani trunk show in the store for the whole month of September. Last Saturday, as part of their three-year anniversary celebration, Monique and Vanetta showcased all of the patterns, samples, notions, and other products used in the Biani bags. They scheduled two shows in an effort to accommodate all the customers who wanted it to attend, and Monique tells us that both shows were fully booked. They have also scheduled several classes for Biani patterns and will be adding more in 2023. Upcoming classes include Peacekeeper, Take a Stand, Night and Day, Running with Scissors, and Flipping Out. So to get all the details about the classes and more, just go to their website and click on the Calendar tab. And again, we'll put up the link to make it easy for you to find it. Next, we're going to travel to Colchester, Connecticut to visit Colchester Mill Fabrics and Quilting. Known as Connecticut's, Connecticut's premier quilt shop, the store features over 6,000 bolts from all the top name designers. In addition to a huge selection of K-Facet and other modern fabrics, the store also stocks novelty fabrics and everything from 1930s and reproduction fabrics to aboriginal prints and batiks. You'll also find supplies for wool applique, hand stitching, a curated selection of rayon batiks and cotton knits, and long arm quilting services on their Gamel Statler computerized machine. Owner Cheryl Doloff tells me that the biggest event they have coming up is a visit from Kate Facet and Brandon Mabley for the 2022 Quilts in Wales Tour Lecture, Book Signing, and Quilt Show. Kafe and Brandon's lecture will be on Friday, September 30th at 7 p.m. And you can get all the details on the homepage of their website and we'll put up the link so you can um, find it easily. Also, in collaboration with Pins and Needles in Mount Kisco, New York, the shop will be offering a sit and sew featuring the K-Facet Hatbox quilt on Monday, October 3rd. 
so you can get a chance to meet Kafe and Brandon, as well as have an opportunity to test drive the brand new Kafe Facet Signature Bernina sewing machines. And again, you'll find details on their website and we'll put up a link. And the shop is participating in the Connecticut Quilt Shop Hop, which runs from September 14th to 25th September 14th to the 25th, and it features 13 shops from across Connecticut. This year's theme is travel, and they are traveling to Hawaii. I saw a great picture on their Facebook page with lots of mac macadamia nut cookies ready to go for the hop. So if you visit all 13 stores, uh, you can be entered to win one of 17 prizes with a total value of over $10,000. Wow, that's quite a shop hop. All right, customers of Colchester Mills Fabrics and Quilting raved about the store's amazing selection and friendly and helpful staff, saying they are always welcoming whether you are a new or experienced quilter. Kathy wrote, I was just starting on my quilting journey and had only been to a national chain fabric store before I found Colchester M Mills. I didn't know where to start, and one of the staff members took a lot of time to show me the three yard quilts section where they had a number of quilts displayed and the fabric pre cut and wrapped with a ribbon. They made it so easy to start. A day later, I brought my children in, ages 12 and 9, and they were blown away by all the colors of fabrics and threads, and they were so excited to see examples of the quilts I wanted to make for them. They were just as excited about Colchester Mills as I was, and now every time I'm going to go, they beg to join me. I loved hearing that. Michelle said, Colchester Mills Fabric and Quilting is my happy place. I'm inspired every time I go there. Beautiful displays, great selection, a large classroom area, friendly and helpful staff. I love everything about this shop. And when asked what made the store special to her, Deborah shared, where do I begin? Cheryl and her husband, Joe, are the best hosts. I said hosts instead of owners because when you get to know them, they're like family. The staff is knowledgeable, friendly, and willing to turn the shop upside down to find what you need. The classes cannot be beat anywhere, seriously. They offer a wide variety of sewing classes, not just quilts, although there are plenty of those, skilled teachers, and a variety of skill levels. And have I mentioned the fabrics? The best variety and quality of any shop I've seen. I could go on, but it's a shop that needs to be experienced in person. Maybe I'll see you there. That sounds like a really fun shop to visit. And remember that they will have their Biani trunk show on display in the store from September 14th through October 7th. So stop in to check it all out. And thank you again to everyone who joined us today. We are going to be back next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Mountain Time with another educational episode of Live with Annie. The amazing Rhonda Pierce of Schmetz Needles will be joining us to share everything she knows about needles. If you struggle with broken threads, skipped stitches, or puckered fabrics, you will not want to miss Rhonda's jam-packed presentation. She has so much helpful information to share, so be sure to join us then. And until then, happy stitching! <laughs>